Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. Today I want to do a quick overview of my absolute favorite Casio G-Shock and actually my favorite watch so far that I've ran into. Uh, it's the Casio GWM 5610 Square. So this watch is, uh, is one of my favorites and I actually did do a video earlier on uh, about this watch but it was quite long. I just want to Go through the features real quick and just give you a quick overview of this for those that don't want to sit down and watch a almost 20 minute long video so quick rundown of the features this has 200 meter water resistance it's solar powered it's atomic has atomic timekeeping which you can turn on and off if you'd prefer you can do uh, 12 and 24 hour time um, you can actually have it automatically do your daylight savings time as well it has world time and uh, it also has, I believe it has, so it has a stopwatch, it has a timer, and I believe you can set one or two alarms on it, but I don't really use those features too, too much. Um, other than that, it's just um, a quartz digital watch, um, very rugged, and it's actually based off of the original Square G-Shocks that looked almost identical to this. And in this case, you have the red ring on the face, which is actually an homage to the original G-Shock that had that same kind of style choice on it um, so this is a, a very very close uh, duplicate almost of that original watch with the couple added new features um, overall it's my absolute favorite watch because it fits so well on your wrist you barely notice it um, the only downside that I really found was the strap was kind of annoying so as you can see I've actually replaced it with uh, a NATO strap I put it on a J's and K's strap adapter and you can kind of see the strap adapter actually does have drilled lugs so you can actually pop out the bars real easy it's really nice you can add whatever type of strap you'd prefer in this case I put a NATO but you can put a leather strap you can put a other silicone or rubber straps um, I just I didn't like the ones that came on it and I typically am not a huge fan of the straps that come on the G-Shocks just because I find they irritate and um, sometimes because they kind of go off on a 90 degree angle or close to that 90 degree angle, it feels like it's pressing on your wrist and just uncomfortable. So I knew I wasn't going to be jumping in the water and bashing this around too much. It was kind of my daily wear watch. So I didn't mind changing it uh, by adding those strap adapters and uh, putting the strap on. So I think the strap adapters were anywhere between 30 to $50 Canadian, which was quite a bit considering the watch is maybe only about $140. But... I thought it was a huge upgrade and I really enjoy it so it's worth my while. I've worn it tons at this point. At this point I've already had the watch for about a year and I've been completely happy with every bit of money I spent extra on top. You will also notice that I did actually put a steel bezel on it which I had no idea but you could actually take out a few screws, throw on a new bezel by just popping off the old plastic one and um, you're good to go. So I think it was 20 or $30 from AliExpress and it gave me the steel face which you know you can't get on a g-shock until you spend i think it's you have to spend at least like 250 dollars to get a steel face g-shock and if you wanted to get the all steel versions i think it's up to about 600 650 so to me i thought it was worth it in the end for around the 200 hundred dollar mark i was able to get a hold of uh, or create a steel g-shock that really fit my needs so i was very happy with that um as far as the solar feature is concerned, from what I understand, you can go for like a decade with this battery and it'll keep going for quite some time because it recharges and eventually the cell that recharges has to be replaced, but it's not for a very long time. When I got the watch, it was down to the medium down at the bottom here, um, but then I got it in some daylight, even fluorescent light, indoor light, it will charge up and it's been at high ever since, it's been totally good. Um, you will see in the top left corner here, it says RCVD. Now RCVD means that it has received signal from the atomic clock within the last 24 hours. It'll check every night at midnight, and if it doesn't connect the first time, it'll try every hour for the next five or six hours, I think it was. Um, and if it doesn't uh, connect within that time frame, then uh, that RCVD will go away. You can also check to see when the last time it was synchronized with the atomic clock as well. So really nice feature. Um, it also has, uh, it'll set your, do your daylight savings time and all that stuff as well. So great, has a great auto calendar. Um, and it also has uh, your power saving mode. So at night, if you haven't moved it around, uh, it will actually, or you haven't pushed any buttons, it will actually shut the screen off to save battery as well. So really meant for those times that you, if you don't wear it for a while, it'll help to maintain that battery so it doesn't run out. 
and still maintain your other features, which is really, really cool. Another interesting feature is you can actually turn it on so that way when you turn your wrist, the uh, backlight will come on automatically. Uh, now that's something I don't really use because I know that drains your battery pretty quick um, and I didn't really find it overly useful, but it is there if you wanted to use it in your specific situation. If you're driving, you're driving a lot, you can actually do that, which is really cool. Overall, I find this watch is really legible and provides you a lot of information in a small package, convenient package, a really classically styled package. Now it's kind of retro. It takes a certain kind of person, a certain kind of look to be able to pull it off. But if you do, uh, it can look really good. And it really, because the, this retro, um, the retro styling is kind of coming back, um, you see more and more people wearing them. And uh, I don't think they're going anywhere for quite some time. They've been around for a while already. I don't think they're going to go anytime soon. Uh, another thing I really enjoy about this too is the positive display. Very visible. When I'm in a meeting or anything like that, I'm able to quickly glance at it. You can see the time from various angles and you shouldn't have any issues being able to read time quick, um, especially if you're in a meeting and you're trying to see what time it is without uh, rushing other people along or, you know, signaling anything that you don't want to be signaling to anybody. You don't want to be showing people that you're rushing them or anything like that. So this watch is perfect for that. It's also great because it has the day or the month and the day and the day and then the number of the month and the number of the day as well. So really convenient as well. It's always visible. It's never obstructed by any hands or anything like that. So very easy to quick uh, to check quickly and very, very helpful. I'm overall very happy with this watch. It's probably the happiest I've ever been with any type of watch. And it's really converted me back to digital watches. I started with digital watches when I was younger, moved to analog, but ended up moving back to this one. And for the past year, I've been so happy with it. For the money, I think it's totally worth it. And I won't go on too much further now because this is supposed to be the condensed video. So I'll leave it at that for now. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.